what would she want me to do? If she was able to tell me, what would she tell me to do? Would she tell me to make my grave more beautiful? Would she tell me, you know, the tombstone's not the right marble? It's not the right granite. Can you make it a little higher? Can you engrave it with this? Can you put Surah Al-Fatiha on it? Can you burn some incense on top of it? Uh, you know, make sure that you uh, watch my favorite TV show for me. What would she ask you to do? What would your loved one ask you to do? They would ask you to give charity. They would ask you to do good deeds on their behalf because that's what they need right now. And in fact, they would be angry with you and admonish you over the money that's wasted on things that are of no benefit to them whatsoever, right? And subhanAllah, you see that sometimes, that there is so much that's spent on the funeral, on the celebrations of life that come after, on the tombstone, on the grave, things that of course do end up in the realm of the sinful even. But at the end of the day, like come back to it, what would that person say to me if they could speak? What would they want me to do? And then consider the other side of the realm. The Prophet ﷺ mentions the righteous person who is in their grave and then suddenly a visitor comes. And this visitor is exceedingly beautiful, has a beautiful smell, has beautiful clothes. And as this visitor comes to the grave, the visitor says, Abshir, glad tidings, surruk, with that which makes you pleased and that which you were promised. And the person responds and says, that face, this face, this wedge, what a beautiful face. And uh, this type of face, wajhu kal wajj, yaji'u bil khair. This is a person that is definitely coming with good news. I know that if I was expecting a punishment, this is not the person that would come to me to give me bad news. This is a person that would come to me to give me good news. Men and who are you? Because you have to be bringing good news. Are you one of the righteous souls? Are you an angel? Who are you? And imagine how stunned the person is. May Allah make us that person when the one responds and says that I am your amal salih. I am your good deeds. SubhanAllah, I mean, this is a consistent trend we're talking about the hereafter, that our good deeds will be personified just as our sins and just as our limbs will become people that testify against us on the day of judgment, may Allah protect us from using our tongue, using our limbs, our hands in ways that are displeasing to him. In the same way, a person meets their sliyam, meets their fasting on the day of judgment, meets their recitation of the Quran on the day of judgment as people that come to give good news. Now, anything in this life that you could have given to that person, right? You think about the most beautiful piece of jewelry that you would have bought the most precious gift you would have bought, uh, the best day of your lives together. Anything that you had ever done in this life to benefit them or to make them happy or make both of you happy in the process, that has died along with that person in the sense that they can't benefit from it anymore, right? But when you do good deeds on their behalf and those good deeds accompany them in their grave, and those visitors come to them or that visitor comes to them and that is the good deed that you continued on their behalf, how pleased is that person going to be with your action? So I want to actually break this down into five things to do for the dead when they pass away inshallah ta'ala. So you can actually remember these five things. And I'll start with this hadith once again in similar vein to the first one that we started off with. A woman comes to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and also says, Ya Rasulullah, my mother has died and she had some fasting that she had to make up, some obligatory fasting that she had to make up. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, do you see that if your mother would have died in debt, that you would have been expected or you would have uh, taken care of her debt? And the woman said, yes, the Prophet Sallallahu said, then go ahead and fast on behalf of your mother. So thinking about the fasting, the siyam as a part of a debt that is owed on her behalf. 